Welcome back, everyone. It's now time for Mentis and CEO Jöran Malmberg. A warm welcome, Jöran. Thank, thank you. Uh, so uh, nice to be here. So I will walk you through my presentation. Uh, happy to present Mentis. Uh, disclaimer, we can move on. So uh, just very quickly uh, about the company. We are a Swedish-based, Gothenburg-based company. Uh, been around for about 20 years. Uh, we are the market leader, the clear market leader in our space with more than 50% uh, market share. We are right now about uh, 120 full-time equivalent uh, uh, staff in, in the world in about 10 locations, uh, so global presence. And uh, we have had a very nice uh, development over the last uh, eight, eight to 10 years. We uh, went to the um, uh, first North premier market back in 2019. If you go back uh, 10 years, we, we have seen almost a 50x uh, development of our value and market cap and about three times in, uh, in, uh, in our uh, business um, uh, uh, totally. Uh, so um, uh, I will explain more about our, um, our business. So we, uh, we work in, in a space uh, referred to as the image guided interventional therapies, uh, which is a long, long term, but it's really uh, x-ray guided uh, procedures where physicians uh, operate through the blood system of the human patient. So typically you go in through a small uh, insertion in, in the groin or in the, in, in the arm of the patient and, and from that you can navigate every main organ in the, in, in the, um, in the body that is uh, connected to the, to the blood system. So, so you, you do operations in the, in the heart, in the brain, in the liver and, 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 the can, and so forth. And um, what, what, what we do is that we, uh, we um, uh, replicate and mi mimic that environment uh, where we have a, um, a hardware device where the doctors insert real clinical devices. Uh, we have a software uh, environment, a physics engine where we replicate the human body. We have uh, actual patient anatomies in, in, in our system. And then obviously we provide the, the, uh, the, the same um, image uh, uh, or images uh, from the x-ray as, as the doctors see in, in a real environment. So a really realistic environment for, for a physician to to practice, rehearse, and plan a, a, a specific procedure. So the, the, um, the, this is really a part of the rapid transition from open surgery modalities. And the, and the reason for this is obviously that these are life saving procedures. Um, uh, also, uh, you can do them on uh, patients of virtually any age. You can, you can repair a a uh, heart a valve of a patient of the age of 9800 years old while a previous method would uh, would typically have a cut off on uh, patients over 82 84 85 years old so um uh, it, it's it's uh, really fantastic procedures but it also requires the utmost skill uh, of, of those uh, doctors pro pro providing these procedures. There's a very rapid development of new devices, new procedures, new techniques. But it's exactly as any, any high performance environment, comparing with a Formula One driver or a kind of professional golf player, you need to continuously hone your, your skills and really prepare for every specific situation. So we, we, we have uh, these capabilities I talked about. We, we, we can import patient-specific environment. So to allow for a doctor to plan or warm up for a specific patient, maybe he, he will in the morning uh, uh, plan and go through the, the case in, in the virtual environment uh, when, uh, to, to make sure that he can reduce the time, reduce the risk for complication on the actual patient in the afternoon. So, so the, 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 the reason here uh, or the importance of this is that there's a, since, since these are very complicated procedures, there's a very high variability of outcome here. This, this graph just uh, exemplifies uh, stroke procedures in the state of Illinois, where you can see that uh, looking at the uh, 20, comparing the 20% 
best hospital with a 20% on the other side, you have more, uh, more than uh, three times or close to four times uh, uh, kind of uh, difference in the outcomes. So, so the, the, there's really a very large uh, requirement here for an, an interest to, to be able to, uh, to better plan and better rehearse this uh, procedure. Uh, also, the backdrop to this is the, uh, the transition to the value-based healthcare, where uh, everyone knows that the, the cost of healthcare is increasing, the, the, um, the population is, is aging. Uh, we, we know that the, uh, the, the cost of medical errors is, is, is also very high. We, d we deal here with, uh, with heart-related diseases, we, uh, to some extent with cancer, we uh, deal with stroke. And you can see that the medical error uh, point here is number three on, on the list. So this is really critical uh, uh, for, for the healthcare industry. So what we do here is that we, we obviously have our core capability. We need to make sure that it's still leading edge. Uh, we are the world leading provider of this and we need to make sure we c that continue to be the case. The integration into the, in, in, into the cat labs uh, and the annual suite, the treatment center is really important. The ability for, for a physician to, instead of having a real patient on this X-ray equipment, to put the mental system on there and be able to, in a fully immersive environment, be able to, to uh, rehearse or plan or, or discuss a case is really important. Uh, uh, the, the data acquisition here is also really valuable. We believe that data is going to be a very uh, large component of our future values. Uh, and, and then obviously move, moving on uh, uh, into the into precision medicine, which is the patient specific, uh, and 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 the last point here is re relates to uh, robotic assisted surgery, where where our ambition is to be be way more than just a training component here. We think the options here to be be a support system to rather help a manufacturer to develop the robots or, or de develop the capability of the robots rather than actually training uh, physicians to use the robot. Uh, so this quickly going through the, the uh, market segments we operate in. Uh, to the left you can see um, leading hospitals in the world. We have over 500 hospitals uh, actively in, in, in the world uh, and it's increasing by 15-20% uh, or something like that. Um, that's about 30-35 percent of our of our uh, total business. On the right side, you see the uh, medical device uh, and imaging companies of the world, uh, where we have probably around 100 clients. But most important here is that we work with all of the 10 largest ma medical device companies, and, and we help them to, put, to to in a safe way bring their new products out to the market. Uh, so here, here's an example uh, related to, to Simmons. This is a very typical example. You see a doctor here actually in a fully immersive environment. You see the, well, the x-ray equipment here. Uh, and uh, th this could be a real patient, but it's not. This is a mental system. So the, so the doctor here can pr practice with, with the real clinical devices, the real environment, and, and he will uh, rehearse for a specific case they're going to have maybe in the afternoon, the, the, the same day. This is a way for him to, to uh, reduce the time the patient is under x-ray, which is important, the, the amount of contrast uh, fluid he would have to inject. And obviously the, the most important thing is to reduce the risk for, uh, for a complication or a, or a, or a mistake. Um, this is another example, more of a team training environment. So the, the team of doctors here to the left as well in, uh, uh, in, in the same uh, very realistic environment. So they are dealing with uh, trying to implant uh, uh, pacemaker leads in the heart of a patient. And you also see on the, um, on the um, diagrams there that the patient is going down. What's happening here is that they, they accidentally rupture a, a vessel. The heart is uh, filled up with, with, with blood. So the patient is basically flatlining here. So they need to re very rapidly solve this issue here. They need to uh, extract the blood out, out of the heart. They need to get the emergency team in, in to do the heart compression. And wh while, it t while they continue the actual procedure to, to save this patient. So this is a typical environment where, uh, where yeah, that you c we can emulate on the, on the mental environment. You see the emergency team there in the back coming in and starting to do kind of heart compression while the doctors continue to do their case. 
this is uh, this is uh, example of uh, interventional robots which is an upcoming area in this field as well uh, here th this gentleman here is running a robot uh, with a joystick but he's really operating on a on, on a mentis virtual patient Th this is going to be a very important part of our future um, i'm going to jump Head here. This is, this is a good example of a device industry use case. This is a, a, a specific device, a complicated device. This, this doctor here saying that uh, is an experienced doctor that have got, got a training on this specific device. He's saying that he, he will do this every time uh, he have, have a case on this device to get the warm up exactly again, same as the professional golfer that goes to the driving range in the morning. This would be a way for him to prepare for a specific task. This is from an acquisition we did a year ago. Uh, this is uh, a, a physical simulation in, in contrast to the virtual I talked about so far. So we acquired a, the, the leading company in the world that provides 3D printing anatomies that allows uh, uh, for introduction of actual clinical devices in, in this environment. And this moves us up in the, in the value chain or upstream rather uh, up with device company. Uh, providing them a solution to to um, uh, develop new new uh, and help them validate new concepts of, of a product, and and that then link, linking that to the virtual environment uh, further down. Uh, so we are uh, in the right side here, working with the patient specific. We're moving into the predictive, uh, wh where uh, we really believe we can provide uh, kind of physician guidance, uh, similar to the automotive industry, where you're talking about the modern car with the uh, auto braking, line assist, things like that. We, we believe we can do the same. So we have sort of passed the stage. It's uh, it, um, still an important part to provide uh, training for junior doctors, but that's not what we are focusing on. The procedures we deal with typically you start doing when you have 8, 10, 12 years experience. So that, that's our, our, our focus. So we, we talk about a uh, acquisition track here. We, we, we have been working that for a year about. So the, these two leftmost boxes are, are our focus. Uh, we're, we're talking about the interventional planning and physician guidance and uh, the, the, the kind of the uh, an analysis part as well. This would complement what we do on the simulation side. We also look at more technology uh, related areas like uh, CAT lab and OR equipment for remote services. So, But the two leftmost points is really where we focus. Uh, so uh, my summary slide here. Uh, really uh, going uh, further vertical into this uh, area uh, with physician guidance and, and the patient specific or precision medicine, as we say. Uh, really in, in, the, um, in uh, he helping the device company and the imm imminence company to, to, to safely bring the products out in, in volume. Uh, and, and then moving into the robotics uh, and the uh, robotics guided cases is really where, where we see the future. So, so um, uh, we, we really want to be a, a uh, integrated part of the daily clinical practice and really providing help for doctors to do the job better. That's what I had. Thank you very much, Joran. Uh, I didn't. I must admit, I didn't know much about Mentis before this uh, presentation. Okay. But it's a really impressive, impressive position that you have achieved. Yep. Uh, Fifty percent market share. Um, could you elaborate perhaps uh, a bit on the, how the competition is evolving in this space? Are there any competitors chasing you or, or what does that look like? Well, we have a, we have a couple of uh, competitors. Uh, uh, most of them are uh, focusing on the broader uh, simulation and training market. So typically they provide maybe, we, we have one product uh, area. Uh, which is this specific area. Our competitors, uh, uh, all our competitors have six, seven, eight, nine different product areas. So really no one else that's focusing specifically on, 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 on this area. That, that, that might happen, but uh, our competitors are mainly focusing on the academic and the, and the basic training side. So in the, in the uh, high-end side and the industry side, we, we have a very, very strong position and uh, re really no clear competitors. Mm. That's, that's really impressive. Um, and you say that you don't want to be seen as just a training company. Wh what do you mean by that? That's a good question. So, I mean, I, I, as, as, a, as I said in the presentation here, I mean, we, we work with 
a lot of new uh, procedures, new techniques. And if you do a procedure in, in the heart, uh, repairing a valve, you're uh, repairing an aneurysm in the brain, that's nothing you do as a junior physician. Even with the two or three or four years experience, I'm typically that's that's uh, six, eight, ten years experience, and they, and also very rapidly you come into a situation where the patients are unique, and and what doctors really need is not just general information about the device. They need to be able to uh, uh, rehearse on on a specific patient environment. So that's why I say this is not really training. This is th this is more planning and more more uh, decision support. Uh, so 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 and, and I think in in many cases, sorry for being lengthy here. In many cases, when you, when you talk about training, everyone immediately connect that to training of uh, of. Um, uh, RT, uh, fellows and residents in Sweden, RT or ST uh, physicians, which is the before the specialization or during specialization. But, but we have for the last 10 years worked uh, predominantly with, uh, with physicians with, uh, with way, way more kind of, kind of experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, a majority of your revenue stems from software. Uh, could you please uh, say a few things about your business model? Absolutely. So we we, we did a uh, very early on actually, or uh, early compared to the competition and market, we, we did move to uh, a SaaS or a software as a service uh, structure for our hospital sales and also the sales through the uh, these uh, companies, uh, Siemens and Philips, uh, back in 2019. So we have a a SaaS component and everything we sell to the hospital are, 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 are SaaS related. Um, uh, generally, uh, we, we sort of jokingly compare ourselves to the coffee machine <laughs> environment. We, we, we have a, a CapEx component, which is the hardware. So our simulator platform is the, is the coffee machine. And then the uh, software is really the additional uh, uh, modules that we sell to each, each, each of these uh, kind of simulators. And, uh, and since we have today uh, 50, uh, 50 or so different procedures running on the same hardware, everyone that have access to a hardware can also operate all, all of, our, uh, all of our clinical procedures. So from, from uh, uh, our resources, we are predominantly a can, can software company. 85% of our, of our um, development resources are, 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 are uh, based on, on that hardware is a very small part. And we're moving more and more into software and even software only. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And if we, if we, if you look into the not the crystal ball, but rather your uh, business plan yeah. uh, <laughs> for the next year, 2022, any highlights that you would like to uh, share with us that you hope to see, material, see materialize? I hope that we can uh, present a couple of acquisitions uh, to uh, complement what we uh, are doing that clearly demonstrate our uh, our approach, our, what I call the vertical approach show that we, ha we add on uh, uh, components that are more in the daily clinical practice that really, uh, yeah, uh, that, that's, that's one component. I hope that we will be see, we, we see that the, the uh, industry side will continue to develop the, the, the way we are done. Uh, and I also believe that the uh, imaging relationship we have with uh, the large imaging companies like Siemens and Philips also gonna gonna uh, s start moving on now after the we, we've seen a, a slow year during the pandemic and, and still in, into this year. But I, I really hope that that can start um, um, increase accelerate again in, into next year. Okay. Mm? Once again, thank you very much, Joran, and uh, good luck. Thank you so much.